Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the um, new physics engine in 3ds Max 2012. Um, basically they've removed the reactor system from this version of 3ds Max. It's still there in 2011, um, but they've removed it for 2012 and they've replaced it with um, Mass FX. Now Mass FX is, um, can only do uh, rigid body simulations, so it is limiting in that respect. Um, obviously with Reactor we've looked at kind of doing cloth sims um, using the toy car feature as well. Um, but the advantage of Mass Effect is that the rigid body stuff is very good and very fast. So um, to load it up, if you right click on your view panel here and turn on Mass Effect's toolbar, you can actually just drag that into your UI there. And you see you've got reset, play, and next frame. And in your three options here, you've got the Mass Effects Tools dialog. Um, if you click and hold the left mouse button, you can pick the type of rigid body you want. You see you've got a static rigid body that will never move, such as a floor. Um, you've got kinematic rigid body, which will be an animated physics object. And you've got dynamic rigid body which will react to the world, so it will react to gravity or wind or if it's hit by another object. And here we've got our different constraints. So if you wanted to have something on a hinge, um, you can use one of these. You've got ball and socket constraint as well. Okay, so to start with, I want you to make a sphere in your viewport. Now scale is very important when it comes to um, physics engines so just make sure that you've got your unit set up centimeters and centimeters there and then make sure when you model everything you model it to um, as accurate size as you can manage. So we'll just go for 60 centimeters on this and then we'll set hemisphere to 0.5 and if you turn on angle snap as well and go to rotate it's going to rotate this 180 degrees and raise it up then I want you to assign an edit poly modifier and delete this top cap so I'm just going to select this top area in the front view hold alt and minus off those and just hit delete. Then I want you to add a shell modifier to that to give it some thickness. Okay, so the next thing to do is add some objects in the scene um, to fall in to actually fall into this. So I just want you to create some boxes and spheres like so and I'll just move this one to there Okay, so we've got a kind of basic thing we can play around with now. So first of all, we need to add all these to our physics system. So if we just hit start simulation, nothing's going to happen because nothing's actually added to uh, the physics scene yet. So if we select our bowl here, and I want you to click and hold left mouse button here and set set selected as static rigid body. So that means this will now just sit completely still in the physics scene. It'll act as a physics object but will sit completely still, it won't move at all. So if we select these objects and set them to dynamic rigid body, that means they'll react to forces in the scene. So if we hit now hit play, we can say that they fall 
nice and neatly into the bowl. If you reset your simulation, you can just play that again. And you can see they're all colliding with each other nicely. Okay, so we'll hit reset simulation again. And first of all, let's select this bowl down here and change it to a dynamic rigid body. That means it will it won't just stay still in the scene, it will actually react to objects hitting it, etc. So we hit play. And you can see it's now having an effect on the scene. And obviously one problem with it is the objects are just hitting this top surface. Um, and that's because the default collision for a dynamic um, rigid body um, isn't suitable for this kind of um, this kind of model. So if you select the model here and come over to the physical message um, physical meshes tab, you'll see you've got mesh type, and you can pick these different types: sphere, box. Obviously, they're very suitable for these two models. Convex would be okay because that means it can actually go within itself, and we've got composite original and custom. So let's try selecting composite and this is where Mass Effects will try and figure out how you want the uh, collision mesh to be and you can tweak the settings here so just hit generate on that and that's how it's kind of figured out our mesh, it's done a good job so let's try playing that again. Now you can see the objects actually fall into the model and it's also reacting to the scene. Let's try tipping these over to one side so they all fall into one side and hit play again. And there we go we can see we get a nice accurate simulation there. Okay, so we've seen out of our list here, we've seen dynamic rigid bodies, we've seen static rigid body. Uh, what does kinematic do? Well, that actually allows us to animate the model. So I want you to select um, your bowl here, turn on animate mode, and let's move this to 25, up to there, 75, up to there and then back to here again. So if you just hit play in your viewport you should have something like that. Okay let's try hitting play on our actual simulation and we can see whoops, that nothing happens yet and the reason for that is because we haven't set it to kinematic rigid body. So now if we hit play Sorry, not there. Make sure you hit play up here. You'll see that it, um, the model has the animation that we put on it, but it does affect the rigid bodies in the scene. So I'll try putting it over here and hitting play. We can see it's shot that one out. Let's try moving it a bit further that way. Hitting play. Like so. So you might notice that um, nothing's actually falling off this level here. And the reason for that, if we come over to our Mass Effects tools, which is just this tab here, you'll see we've got Use Ground Plane ticked on. And that means that all of World Zero in Max is essentially the ground. So if I just make a giant plane in the view, I'll illustrate it better, that's actually our ground there. So if we turned off, use ground plane, moved this model down to here, and set this to be a static rigid body, so now we've got a new floor, 
but it's much lower than world zero. We can hit play and you see everything will go down to that level. Obviously other than our animated model. Okay, so that's a very kind of basic introduction to um, the new physics engine. So you can see we've got our three different types of rigid bodies up here. Um, we've got reset and play simulation here. And um, we can set our collision mesh for each model with this option here. Now other things to look at are our actual Mass Effects Tools tab. So we saw we can use a different model, sorry, we don't have to use World Zero as the ground, we can set that to be however we want. So we might actually have this rotated. Then obviously the models would actually roll down it. Uh, we can set the gravity there. And this is the other really interesting tab, our rigid body substeps and solver iterations. Now this is actually the quality of the simulation. So let's just delete that plane out and tick on use ground plane again. Now the higher these numbers are, the better the quality of the physics simulation. Um, now substeps refers to how many calculations it does um, in between each frame so that's currently on 3 so if you set it to 20 that means between frame 0 and 1 it'll do 20 sub steps so 20 there'll be 20 calculations for every frame so let's try that now we might not be able to see it in this but the quality of your physics simulation will be improved you shouldn't really need to raise this value any higher, but it's worth messing around with as well. But really, you should be able to keep that on 30 and just increase the substeps to improve the quality. Um, in terms of other settings, if we come over to Tools, sorry to edit, for each mesh we have in our scene, so each one of these rigid bodies, you can actually set the physics material properties. So you see you've got static friction and dynamic friction and in preset you can actually pick the type of material it is. So let's just select all of these and this and we'll set them to something like steel then reset our sim and play that those then we'll reset our simulation and select everything again and this time set it to rubber and play that and you can see we're actually getting different material properties so The models are actually bouncing around and reacting with each other differently. And that's just because of these settings here. Now obviously you can pick um, from the defaults here, but you can also define them yourself by first picking the one closest to the material you want, and then going back to none, and then you can tweak these settings as you see fit. Okay, so what if you're happy with your animation? Um, obviously we can see if we play the animation in our viewport it's not actually in our scene. So in order to apply it to the actual scene you need to bake it. So if we come over to tools you'll see you've got bake all, bake selected and this is where you can bake your scene. So um, it's dependent on the amount of frames in your scene. So let, I'm just going to save this. And just hit bake all. So 
Now if I hit play, now I actually have the animation in my viewport. And each object actually has um, keyframes baked into it. So I can actually delete the rigid body off each of these now. So just a couple for example. And you can see I still have the animation in my scene because it's fully baked in. Um, if I wanted to do longer than 100 frames, I would just have to set my configuration to longer. So I'll just reopen that scene. And in time configuration, set this to end time 300. And then hit A call. Obviously, it's going to take a bit longer because it's three times the length. Now if I play that, you'll see I have the animation for 300 frames. Now obviously these models are quite basic, um, but if you wanted to have a more complex model, for instance let's say if we wanted this to be something like a dice, then what you'd do is you'd actually model your dice to the same specifications or as close as it can possibly be. Obviously you do this at the start rather than this silly example I'm doing now. We'll just leave it like that for now. And then what I'll do is add a load of detail to this mesh. Turbo smooth it like so. Obviously, kind of uh, cut in all the all the numbers you'd want in it too. And then, if I select the link tool, I could then link that model to the original box. And you can see the dice model will now move with it. So with this model, um, sorry, I then could select the original rigid body box on object properties, just turn it off renderable, and maybe do display as box as well. Now if I play my scene, you can see I've got the animation for a detailed model, but I've only had to animate a simple box to get it. So that's kind of how you would use you would use physics in a render scene as a kind of mock geometry for um, a detailed model. Okay, so now we've worked through this. We're going to work through part two and part three just to show you the rest of the settings in Mass Effects.